Welcome back to video eight of Composing for Orchestra. My name is Barton Johnson, and we're talking about my work, Help is on the Way in Five Movements, Movement One specifically, and only the introduction, which I love my introduction, actually. Uh, I will just play, um, what did I want to play, actually? Actually, no, I don't want to play it because my hand recorder is not working. So, um, we're gonna, yeah, we're going to talk about silence. So silence or rest are obviously these kind of things. Now let me one quick side turn, detour. I love putting in a rest. It gives me so much satis satisfaction. You know why? Because there's no longer any doubt. Because before, I know for sure everything's blank, right? Except for the, you know, the bar lines, if I know. Well, I would know if I'm orchestrating. But, and then I have to uh, listen, well, what am I hearing, you know? Is it the strings? Why is it not the trumpet? Are you sure it's not the trumpet? What about the trumpet? You know, there's all these things. It's all this so much doubt, right? But once I know for sure I'm not using an instrument, I put that rest. And one of the easiest things to do, I find when orchestrating, if I'm like, well, what am I supposed to, what am I hearing? Is I ask, what am I not hearing? Well, definitely I don't want tuba here. Definitely didn't want double bass. Though I think in my original version, I did want double bass, probably because I want to hold off to here for the do to really bring it in. Uh, in regards to rests, make sure you fill them in. Okay, definitely, obviously here, you know, you need the rest, it's proper notation. But for example here, the clarinets are not playing. So you might be tempted to just have nothing blank because you don't want to, quote, waste time by filling in a rest. <sighs> I can't tell you how much time I have lost in retrospect by trying to not waste time. It's good to want to not waste time, but the not wasting of time happens when you have a plan, okay? When you set goals, when you have objectives, and then you spend that time to organize, and then you have a clear vision when you go on to compose. I personally recommend, and this could be a bit dangerous maybe for certain composers that are maybe blocked, or maybe not actually, it might help, um, is to, when I compose, I wanna know what am I trying to achieve in this session, okay? I guess if you're just improvising, but even then you wanna improvise and get some ideas, or I want to, orchestrate these three measures. I want to do this. Um, I gotta know what I'm gonna do, otherwise it's kind of, there's no clear goal and I don't really get that much done. Um, so here the clarinet though, yeah, you might be tempted to not fill in the rest. Oh, well, yeah, it's just, uh, but to me, when there's a rest, and this is more maybe my personal taste, it tells me that that's definitive. When there's not a rest, for example, where is it missing? It shouldn't be missing at this point in the process, but I know I saw something missing. Um, this is just a mistake. But for example, if, um, if this was just blank, to me would mean maybe I'm still going to put that instrument in, okay? So once I know for sure I'm not going to be using an instrument, then I put in that rest. Uh, I want to double check if anything else I want to impart on you. Okay, we have essentially, or we will, by when this video is totally complete, and I urge you to listen to the end because you might miss something. We have now finished the first grand partie, say in French, of composing for orchestra. Again, this is not going to be exhaustive, like study and how to write for orchestra, just tips and tricks I've learned writing my first orchestra work help us on the way in five movements. Barney Johnson. Okay, just the first movement, just the introduction. But we have now completed the first part, which is notation. Don't forget we had what? We had first we had the um, kind of big details, big picture, and then we moved on to personal taste. Okay, now we're going to be moving on to orchestration, which is like always, you know, it's the fun part, but you're not gonna be able to orchestrate if you do not notate correctly. And well, they kind of go hand in hand, actually. You know, when you're orchestrating, you're 
probably going to add some of these details. You know, like when you're doing the piano score, a lot of times some of these details aren't there. The dynamics should be there, right? But the um, staccatos and stuff like that, you know, because those are going to be incumbent on what you're hearing. Um, so yeah, we're going to now moving on to orchestration. I'm really excited to present orchestration to you, so I'll see you very shortly. Have a wonderful day.